So I've just got a glimpse of one of the most dangerous rivers in the world and we are on our way right now. Yes, not bad are you? Yeah, good, thank you. Awesome. Now then, I hope you're all well. Welcome back to another video. Um, I am staying at a campsite tonight, but I can't check in till one, which means that I've got all morning to do some exploring and stuff like that. So at the moment I've come down to Bolton Abbey and I'm gonna show you the Strid. Now it's something that I talked about in an older video. Um, it's a very, very dangerous piece of river. So we're gonna have a walk up there first. Then we're gonna go head out to the campsite and do a campsite tour, all the usual stuff. Let's crack on. Let's have a walk up to the Strid and uh, and I'll show you the ferocious river. I hope it's ferocious now, because if it's not, then I'm going to look like a right divana. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to have a go at that pirate boat, but uh, a child has just arrived and... Uh... <laughs> so you walk past the cafe and up through the Strid wood. It's not a long walk, uh, probably about half a mile and uh, that takes you all the way up to the Strid. So as a Yorkshireman obviously I balked about the uh, the price of 15 quid to get in that's probably just because of the reasons I wanted to get in but if you wanted to come with your whole family spend the whole day here I think it's totally worth it. Uh, certainly Christmas time they do uh, like a fairy tale walk where you go through and you find different things it's great for the kids I think they do like a welly walk as well in spring and summer so it's always good I think for the younger ones but I'll never grow up I'll always be a young one I like doing the uh, welly walk Olivia loved doing it when she was little when she were about four or five uh, various little activities to do around and about oh. blush <laughs> So I've just got a glimpse of one of the most dangerous rivers in the world and we are on our way right now. Classed as one of the deadliest rivers in the world, the River Wharf has taken so many lives it baffles me as to why there are no physical barriers to stop people falling in. With an estimated sonar recorded depth of over 65 metres, as measured by the YouTuber Jack and Snacks, it's deep and it could be deeper than some have previously predicted. In one of his videos, he mentions that he's planning on professionally diving the site to find out for certain how deep it actually is. A huge volume of water is forced into a very narrow opening, and over the years it has created a very, very deep, narrow and dangerous stretch of water that bubbles like it's boiling, ready to take its next victim underneath its undercut, rocky surface. Please be careful if you visit, and please do not try jumping across the gap, no matter how tempting and easy it may look. The rocks are very slippery. There will of course be plenty of folk out there who say, well, my uncle's dog's Auntie Jeff, who had a gippy leg and smoked 10,000 Super Kings a day, fell in and survived, but trust me, you don't want to fall in. I will pop a link in the description to more information about the Strid, and don't forget to check out Jack and Snack's video too, link will be in the description. 
that's about all of the Deadly River that I can cope with today. Uh, I did get some photographs, if there are any nice ones I'll pop them up now, but I forgot my filters, gutted, because I could have done like a long exposure and had it all looking like steam and uh, gutted. But yeah, certainly worth coming here. Right, let's head back to the van and uh, let's go camping, nice! <laughs> So I've arrived, not arrived, um, just parked in the car park, which is just off reception, which is just down there. And uh, now we need to go check in. So let's do that. Right, so check-in was a breeze, really nice, uh, lovely lady on reception. She said, if I just come down here and then I can choose anywhere in that field that's not got an electric hookup because I am off the grid today. Uh, just need to pop that in my windscreen. Uh, go get my van and then we should be rocking. Right, so it's about half an hour later and I'm still not camped up. Uh, I've just been speaking to a chap who saw me with a camera and uh, started asking loads of questions, but he's come all the way up from Cornwall in his Suzuki car just to explore uh, the Yorkshire area and, and go down and via Skipton and he's up to Ribblehead and things like that. It's been lovely chatting with you. I know you subscribed, so uh, welcome on board. And so now it's time to get camped up and... Uh, and yeah, show you the new things that I've bought. Oh, Savannah! Right, so because I was chatting with that bloke for such a long time, I completely forgot where they said I could go. Um, so I've just been driving around the field thinking, no, this doesn't seem right, this doesn't seem right. So I came back up to reception uh, to go speak to them and say, where do I need to go? Because I didn't want to get everything set up in the awning and everything and then find out that I needed to move. So now I know exactly where I'm going and it actually looks amazing. So yeah, let's go. So the problem with not having an allocated pitch, and this is something I've said before, is it gives you too much choice. And with too much choice means all I do is just drive around the campsite 5,000 times trying to find a spot. Now, there's a tent just over there, uh, which is downwind, and I think I'm gonna be up here on this little ledge um, because the lady on reception said to me, she stayed there before in a van and it's a really nice little spot. There's another little ledge here, but that makes me closer to those guys now i'm just having a quick look down here to see if this is somewhere where i could go now if it's too near water it's going to be like yeah there's so many midges down here oh, it's beautiful and everything you know it's gorgeous secluded out of the way but i can already see the midges so i think my spot is just up there in my little castle on the hill <laughs> the only thing that's concerning me ever so slightly is this uh there's a there's like a car trail, I don't know if you can see it, and then um, like a, a ribbon and a stick. And that makes me think, is that somebody's spot that they're saving for later? I don't know. The last thing I want to do is set up here and then these guys come back and be like, well, this is our spot. This could have been where they were parked with their van. So what I might do, is just go down, there's another little ledge there go down to there there are not very many flat spots when you come onto this section uh, which is I think why it's mainly for tents but you, you are allowed vans on here uh, so like I say there's a spot just there which is nice and flat just uh, where those trees are uh, there's the spot that I'm on now and then there's a couple of spots just down there that are nice and flat however that is where it'll be like Midgeville Tennessee So I'm all capped up and it's ready to go and I've got the Kadak going and I'm going to cook a full uh, curry on that in a little while 
um, I'll do a full video on it and a, a, a full review once I've used it for a little bit because I don't want to just assume that it's brilliant because it's my first ever time using it. I want to use it for a little bit, find out its quirks, find out what the issues and problems are and obviously how brilliant it is as well at the same time. My new table, which is pretty snazzy. That came the other day um, because I wanted to buy a wind uh, deflector thing for the burners that we've got. And this was only about £10 more expensive than uh, the wind deflectors that we're looking at. So um, I ended up going for a full kind of kitchen table thing. I'll put a link in the description below to it. It's not the sturdiest on the planet, but it does a job. It's got little uh, height adjustments on the feet. And there is um, like a, I've got some B-roll of me setting it up in the living room. There is a cupboard that you can put under there to store like dry goods and stuff, which is zippable with some little shelves and things like that. I'm only here for one night. I don't want to be setting up, you know, a full blown campground, but you know, it's, it gives me my little area now. So I've got my table, my gas bottle, which can go a little bit further down. The Kadak doesn't come with the, uh, the regulator. So that's from my old kitchen that used to be in the van. Uh, just over here, I've got, my fire pit with the uh, grass protector and uh, and my wood and I think it's actually doing a bit of raining because obviously it wouldn't be a pop top adventures video without a bit of rain would it <laughs> having just done the campsite tour which is coming up in the next bit of video it's take it's going to be the longest campsite tour ever they've got so much stuff here uh, and I, I don't want to make a habit of going to a campsite and going I love this one and then the next one oh well, I really love this one uh, the the last campsite that I went to at Flamborough, it's got there's there's something special about it, and I and I, I still have yet to put my finger on why I think it's so special. But this one's got everything. This has got it all. It really, really has. And well, I'm not going to waffle now. I'm going to shoot straight to the campsite tour. So enjoy. See you bye. Catgill Farm campsite in Bolton Abbey is nestled between Ilkley and Skipton in the Yorkshire Dales, and I truly believe this site has something for everyone. Just a short walk from the site of the beautiful ruins of Bolton Abbey. Plenty of tea rooms and if you're feeling flush, the stunning but very expensive Devonshire Arms serves Michelin star food. I'll stick to my pot noodle, thank you. Just down the road from there is the equally gorgeous wedding venue, the Tithe Barn. You can drive into Skipton or Ilkley for a day out in less than 20 minutes and I highly recommend visiting both of these places. There is lots to do and Skipton even has a castle for you to explore. Catgill site offers more than just your usual camping. It has some amazing glamping pods and tents just a short walk from reception that boast amazing views of the Yorkshire Dales countryside. From what I could see, each glamping pod has its own hot tub, decking area with chairs and fire pits and amazing views. There is a hut next to the tents which has a cute little toilet and shower, a nice touch. I think these are a great alternative to camping if you're wanting a nice relaxing break away with your partner. The site itself is tidy and has a nicely presented reception area. There is a shop on site and it provides most of the items you may need to stock up on during your stay. There is a waste area for your rubbish, a bin for your ashes and loo waste for green waste only. Loo blue is not permitted. There is a cafe which is open most weekend mornings and serves coffee and croissants. They have one toilet block situated at the top of the campsite so set off for your wee in good time if you don't have your own facilities. The toilets are very clean and well maintained with plenty of toilets and showers. I didn't look in the ladies' loo, as I'm sure a man with a camera in the ladies' loo wouldn't end well, but I'm guessing they are very much the same as the men's. In this block, there is a pot wash area indoor, and they also provide a kettle, microwave and fridges should you need to use them during your stay. Outside the block is a dog wash area and water tap. There are a few taps dotted around the site, and I found a few near to my pitch. Electric hookup pitches are a good size and pretty flat, however, if you're staying in the field I have chosen, you'll need to drive about a bit to find a flat spot. So bring your levelling ramps at busy times because all the flat spots may have already been taken. Without electric, I paid just £12 for my stay for one night during the week. But please check their website as prices do vary during the year and depending on how and when you intend to camp. Larger motorhomes are not permitted on site, but camper vans, tents and smaller vehicles are all welcome. Quiet time is from 10.30pm until 7am, so this site is not for those who like to party all evening. Most importantly for me, this site allows fire pits. You can bring your own or hire them and purchase wood from reception for a small fee should you wish. All fires must be raised off the grass and if you have a fire like mine it's probably best that you lay down a grass protector. I could show you so much more of what this site has to offer, but I think I've covered all the main points. If you want to see more, you should come and see this place for yourself. I'll leave a link to their website in the description below. Catgirl Campsite, you get the prestigious double thumbs up from me, an awesome site with a lot to offer. Now, 
Where's my beer? So I bought myself a Kadak. I know. It's the Safari Chef 2. Now, um, it's not a whimsical purchase. This is something I've been thinking about for a while because a lot of subscribers have messaged me saying, don't use those single burners. Get yourself a Kadak because it's way more versatile and it means you have to carry less stuff. Um, debatable because you've got to bring uh, a, a massive gas canister. However, you can convert these to use the smaller gases and things but we'll get into that in a future video when I do a proper review on it however I'm going to cook my full dinner on this tonight I'm going to make a curry and I'm probably going to use this which is a lid but also a pan uh, sorry if there's wind noise so I'm going to use this as my pan uh, to make my dinner and go on there it's going to be awesome um, I've got the 907 gas bottle with the regulator from my old kitchen um, so yeah that's all secured on and tightly on and stuff like that but yeah that's all good but it comes comes with a bag which is nice and spicy I and then just quickly show you what else it comes with because it's amazing um, you get a book obviously free bit of book now what I've done is I've left it all in the bubble wrap so it don't rattle um, but you've got like a grill like this which means you can do all your burgers and all the kind of barbecuey stuff so it gives you that kind of that grill line I don't know whatever and then uh, the one that we'll be using mostly for breakfasts and things like that is this this is basically like a frying pan that's not a frying pan so you can do like your bacon and your eggs and um, most importantly as well the thing we've been looking forward to making most while we've been camping is uh, crepes or pancakes yes we can make pancakes and um, I think what we'll probably do in the future is get a pizza stone so we can make pizzas do our own dough and stuff like that and make pizzas on the Kadak honestly it's next level it's absolutely next level so once I've used this for a little bit longer and I've found out the pros and the cons and things like that I'll do a full review on this in a future video so you get to find out more about this uh, Kadak Safari Chef 2 hashtag not sponsored at all um, uh, to see whether it's something that you guys might benefit from they, they, all, they do all different ones in the range but you know we can use our Ridge Monkey on it as well all our pans everything like that so and we've also got the other burners so the other burners could probably go in here or we could put the Kadak on there and then the burners on there so then the uh, wind deflector does its job so we could do a, like a full roast dinner if you wanted I mean you, you can do roasts honestly it's oh, it's next level right I'm gonna sit down now and enjoy my beer listen to nature I'm not even gonna have any music on there's too many people around to be fair to put music on I don't want to disturb them it's nice it's nice Look at that, nice, oh, this is a right nice curry, oh, I'm going to get to it in, this is going to be properly nice, mm. and as if by magic, that's dinner done, nice, love the Kadak, that was mint, it was just so pain free, um, it'd be nice to have two, so I could have the um, naan breads cooking at the same time, although I suppose what I could do is get one of my other burners out and have the naan breads cooking, in the Ridge Monkey on that one while the curry's cooking. So yeah, happy days. Two things, beer, fire pit, nice. So today's beer of choice is the Yorkshire Terrier. Nice, um, given to me by a wonderful subscriber. I am photographing his daughter's wedding on Saturday this week. Uh, thank you so much, buddy. That's really kind of you to send me these. Mm. Oh, that's nice. Lovely, jovely. Where's Yorkshire Terrier made? Yorkshire Amber Ale, York Brewery. Nice, lovely, jovely. 4.2%, that's perfect. Absolutely love that. I'll have to keep trying it though, just to make sure I do like it. Uh, I'll have to try the other four 
bottles. <laughs> so I don't feel so bad now because there's other people with fire pits. Um, I always feel a little bit self-conscious when I'm the only one. Um, but stark contrast to this campsite and the last campsite that I was at, which is people are sat outside their um, tents. There are two vans over there, a guy with a really nice Land Rover. Um, he sat outside as well. So I think it makes a, a huge difference depending on which campsite you go to um, that then depends on whether people sit outside or not. Update. It's 8 o'clock. Nothing's happened. <laughs> Update. Nothing's happened. <laughs> That's it. That peacock thing, whatever it is, is still making that noise. I hope it don't do that at 5 in the morning. Update. It got darker. Right guys, it's half past ten, everyone's gone to bed, so uh, I'm going to say good night and I shall see you in the morning. Take care, night night. Good morning everybody, awesome sleep last night. Um, I did need my hot water bottle though because it, it dropped down cold. The problem I have is, because I like to make sure the fire pit's fully out before I come to bed, I'm sat outside, kind of without a fire pit, so it gets down to the coals and stuff and then I pour water on it so it's out, but then I've been outside without a fire pit and I get cold. So. I got in the van, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to need my hot water bottle. So I put the kettle on, did my hot water bottle, shoved it in my sleeping bag, got ready for bed. By the time I'd got into bed, that hot water bottle had made it all lovely and cosy and toasty and it was properly nice. And then my head hit the pillow and I was out like a light. It was awesome. <laughs> Woke up about half past six this morning, uh, just naturally, and then heard the neighbours that I had over here packing to go away. So I reckon they must have things to do and places to go. A uh, nice short night for them, a couple of beers and whatnot, that was nice. But uh, but yeah, there a lot of people are packing up to go because it's Friday now and the weekend obviously is busy. I, I remember the chaps in reception telling me that uh, it was a super busy weekend, they were fully booked. So if you do want to come and stay here, make sure you book well in advance. I don't think you can do it like the night before. Um, certainly if you're coming on here, where I am now, you want to get the best spot, so uh, the flattest spot and stuff. So yeah, get here and get booked early. Uh, I think the earliest you can check in is I think one o'clock, so get here for like five to one, so then you have got the prime spot, uh, the one that I had. And if you do stay at any of the camp spots that I've been at, it'd be lovely to see uh, pictures. Send me some pictures on our Facebook page or on our Instagram. That would be really really nice to see. Um, so yeah, right. I have got things to do and places to go. I've got a wedding tomorrow, so it means I need to crack on. I've also got to do the Aldi shop, living the dream, guys, living the dream. Um, and yeah, lots and lots to do. So what I'm going to do there is I'm going to end the video and I'm going to see you in the next adventure. Take care, guys. I shall see you on the next one. See you, bye. Good morning, everybody. I hope... Why is this taking so long to record? Good morning, everybody. I had an awesome sleep last night. It was amazing. No, a bit too much. It wasn't that good. Good morning, everybody. Mm. Good morning, everybody. I did. <laughs> There's a man sat on the bench behind me. He's just staring at me like I'm holding up a bag of poo. The notorious people are looking at me. See this? So uh, I used to go to school with this girl, Holly. Stay in the air. Excuse me. Hello, McFly. Uh. No. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just gonna have some peanuts. <laughs>